Now, Jordan Clarkson on the season is averaging 16.8 points, 3.4 rebounds, and five assists. He stands at six foot three, weighing roughly 195 pounds. And at the age of 31, going on 32 after this season concludes, he's obviously been a pretty solid player at the guard position. Now, he does have nine years of experience in the NBA and was drafted in 2014, as we remember in round two at pick 46 by the Los Angeles Lakers. By and large, he spent the majority of his career being a rotation piece for a lot of different teams and being put in that six man role. For the Utah Jazz, he came in as a six man and honestly, he was pretty darn good at it. So much so that he even won the six man of the year award and more recently, he just seems to be stuck in that role permanently. They tried to start him at the beginning of the season, but after a comfortable amount of games, they realized that he couldn't score as effectively against starting caliber players as he had been feasting against defensively challenged individuals in second units for opposing teams. So the switch was made. And though at certain points the numbers did go up a little bit, they still by and large were not ideal. And now here we are roughly three quarters through the season and his numbers have not been ideal, especially since All-Star break, where we're seeing him play a significant lion's share of minutes, despite us deciding we were going to go ahead and develop Keontae George and Bryce Sensiball for the situation of what appears to be Jordan Clarkson's eventual departure from the Utah Jazz. Now he is on a rather team friendly contract and I think that there is going to be a big market for him in this offseason. Though there were a couple trades including the one of Quentin Grimes away from the New York Knicks that ended up squandering his opportunities at the trade deadline because they just weren't looking for him specifically. But to go ahead and set the stage, let's go ahead and dump into some numbers. So he has played in 50 games for the Jazz this season, averaging 30.2 minutes per game. 16.8 points have come from that, and he's shooting 6 for 14.6 from the field, which works out to 41% dead even. He's also 1.7 for 5.6 for 3, which is 29.5%. And from the free throw line, he's shooting 88% on 3.2 for 3.7%. He also averages 3.4 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2.7 turnovers to go along with 0.6 steals, 0.1 blocks, and 1.4 personal fouls. Now the good news is, by and large, his assist numbers are the career high for him so far this year. He has, across the entirety of his career, averaged roughly 1 to 2.5 steals per game. Last season he averaged 4.4 and now he's up to 5. His turnovers have also increased as before earlier on in his career he was averaging 1 and change and last season he was averaging 3. This season he's down to 2.7, which is where we'd like to keep it and honestly see it go a little bit lower, but it's understandable considering the expectation that he had of developing a stronger playmaking sense. Alongside that, he also this season has had the highest number of career double-doubles in any season after last season having three this season he had five he also had the first triple double for the utah jazz in roughly 16 seasons this year earlier on but that's as far as the good goes because it gets very ugly after that if you were paying attention i said 41 percent from the field on 14 and a half field goal attempts and 29.5 percent from three on 5.6 three-point attempts basically saying that while he is averaging 16.8 points, it's incredibly inefficient, so much so that he is an overall net negative, and his overall box score plus minus reaches a negative 2.9, which is obviously in the lower half of overall across his career. There was a couple articles that came out that I found to be very interesting, and so I wanted to go ahead and include some of the information in this particular video. For Jordan Clarkson, it was said that it might be time to come to terms with the fact that he just isn't the same player that he was last year. And last year even was a slight step down from previous seasons in some ways. He currently shoots 29.5% from three. His sub replacement level PER is considered to be the fourth worst in the NBA, according to BPM. His defensive rating is 511 out of 543. And worse, his offensive rating is 402 out of 543. DPM says that he's the worst top seven rotation defender in the NBA. And his true shooting percentage is 182nd out of 196 players that qualified this year. Now, the biggest thing is his box score plus minus in all of his numbers, even so far, as far as to go into those advanced metrics, he's just not the same guy that he once was. 
and it's time to go ahead and realize that he may be at that point in his career where he's just not going to be that guy ever again. Now, it could be a situation of fit and a little bit of situational basketball as well, because by and large, Jordan Clarkson has always been known as a streaky shooter, but he's also always been the guy that could always at random really give you 20 to 30 points on some given night when you really need some guy to step up. And this year, he just really hasn't been that guy. Adding in more interesting metrics, come to find out he actually has four more positive box score plus minus games this season than Taylor Hendricks, the rookie who has spent most of his season in the G League. And his closest comparison statistically this year has been Jordan Poole, who's currently on the Washington Wizards and really has been arguably the worst starting guard in the league, despite last year being so promising. Now, the most interesting thing is that according to Cleaning the Glass, the Jazz are better off in every major statistical category except for free throw rate when he doesn't play. Now, they also predict that he makes the team 11 games worse in total. He has just one lineup that he's played in this season where he's played more than 100 possessions and has a positive point differential at just plus seven. Now, the main reason why a lot of people will always defend Jordan Clarkson and the main reason why he's been able to make the living the way that he has while simultaneously not being a very strong defensive threat is the simple fact that he's known for being a bucket getter. When you need a guy that's going to get you a bucket, Jordan Clarkson has been that guy. The issue is this season, while we have already known that he hasn't been a great defender or a particularly locked in defender, he's also not hitting his shots at an efficient enough rate to make him playable in a winning basketball setting. Now to add insult to injury, he currently sports the 38th highest usage rating in the entire NBA. But of the top 200 players in usage, only Asura Thompson, Josh Giddy, Russell Westbrook, and, and Jordan Poole have been ranked as shooting worse than he is according to true shooting percentage. And only Jordan Poole is shooting worse in effective field goal percentage. All in all, things are looking good for Jordan Clarkson in the long term. Now, I do not think that this is the best indicative season and everybody's allowed to have poor years. Everybody's afforded to have bad opportunities and be put in situations where they're not going to be the most successful. But coming from a player whose entire bread making has come down to his ability to put the ball in the hole, when that's the only thing that he really does particularly great, when he finds himself into waters where he can't effectively do it, it definitely is a detriment to the team and makes him borderline unplayable. Now, the only reason why I see him playing a significant number of minutes now and really having the longest leash that he's had out of any player on the roster is the fact that he has been the longest tenured guy. He's well known with ownership and they get along very well. And ultimately, he's become a fan favorite over the years. I believe that ultimately this is likely to be his last season though, and that's why they're playing him out the way that they are. He does have a market for him, and I do believe that he will end up finding an almost immediate trade partner in the off season for him to be unloaded to. And I think that he will benefit from being put in a new situation. The only unfortunate thing is the fact that it had to end in this manner. I really don't see the point in bringing him back next year, considering that you're trying to focus on the rebuild and really just get the young guys going. And when you have a guard like Chris Dunn on the roster, who is an effective leader and effective defensive piece that also knows how to be a proper communicator on the court and also a very efficient decision maker, it's kind of hard to say that you should also keep Jordan Clarkson, who's borderline the polar opposite of that. With that being said, I do have optimism for Jordan Clarkson in new situations, and I believe that a trade is eminent for him coming into this offseason. I think that ultimately it's in his best interest to go ahead and find a situation that works better for him specifically. And also, I think I can trust Danny H to go ahead and make that deal, whether it does bring in a more solid guard to the Utah Jazz, or if it's just a situation where you send him out there and you just get draft compensation back. With that being said though, you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know if you think this is just a temporary thing for Jordan Clarkson, even though it's happened on a 50 game sample size, or let me know if you think that he has run his course and while he has been great for the Utah Jazz, it's time for them to send him on to greener pastures. Thanks for tuning in this video. It's your boy Ray Thoops. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications if you like Utah Jazz content, and become a member of the channel to get the videos faster than anybody else and help support the content. Thanks for tuning in this one. As always, good morning, good evening, and good night, no matter where you are on the globe watching. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys 